Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Astrology Outlook for August 2021. Now this is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook. So if you don't know your ascendant, your moon or your rising sign, then I suggest you check that out. If you go in the description below, you'll be able to click a link and plug in your details and find out what your ascendant moon or sun sign is. Now, when you find that out, a lot of people ask me, which one do I look at? Should I look at just one or just two or three? Well, I think if you've got time to look at two, definitely look at two. So look at your ascendant and your moon in particular. Your ascendant is going to show you the pathway of your life, the physical path of your life as it unfolds beneath your feet. And the moon is going to show how you feel about what's happening in your life, how you think about it and how you feel about it. And that's very important because if you think about it, you know, we're always living in our minds, aren't we? You know, we're thinking and feeling, uh, we're on screens, we're on phones. You know, our lives are very uh, mental, especially at the moment. So, um, you know, with lockdown and all that kind of thing, our lives are not hugely physical at the moment. So definitely the moon is very important that you tune into your moon sign. Now your sun, yes, you can look at your sun. If you've got planets conjunct your sun, if you've got one of the nodes conjunct your sun, that could be quite important for you. Also, if you're a very creative person and creative self-expression is important to you, then it's terrific to look uh, at the report for your sun. So in today's episode, I am going to cover a couple of news items. I'm going to cover the Free Britney case, and that will lead quite nicely into a little bit of discussion about the United States chart. So if you want to stick around for that, you're very welcome. Otherwise, you're equally welcome to just hop into the little mini readings. You can click on whichever one you want and then crack on with your day. All right, so those of you who are sticking around for the intro, for the news matchup, I do like to do a bit of a news matchup. Let's get into the first news matchup story. We're going to see if we can match up uh, the stars with what's happening in the Free Britney case. Now, I had no idea that this case was going on because I don't really watch mainstream media anymore at all. I typically watch alternative news through YouTube uh, and every now and then I might end up on you know The Guardian or BBC but I'm not so keen on those <laughs> as news sources anymore they do feel like propaganda and I mean Wikipedia is becoming problematic as well so um, you know but one of you lovely viewers out there very kindly in uh, one of the past episodes you wrote hey would you cover the Free Britney case so I googled it and I thought let me learn what this is and I was like oh yeah this is really interesting and this is an important thing to talk about because I think all of us are kind of looking at the restrictions around us and there there are these forces building within us that are kind of saying no you know we, we don't we don't want these restrictions we don't need these restrictions and this is happening in the life of Britney Spears so what is going on? Why is there a hashtag, hashtag Free Britney? Well, there's a grassroots movement of her fans. They have identified and spotted that she looks to be quite trapped. And she is trapped. She's trapped by this thing called a conservatorship. Now, what is a conservatorship? I had to look up all this stuff because I had no idea what this was. And I believe it's um, a court appointment. Basically, the court orders someone else to act on your behalf, so to make financial or legal decisions on your behalf. In the United Kingdom and here in Australia, I know that we have this thing called power of attorney. I think that's kind of a similar thing. And in America, they call it a conservatorship. So as I was getting into the case, I discovered that they had handed over all this power over Britney Spears' life to her father. So it turns out that he is calling the shots in her life. And I remember when I was just going through the case and trying to understand it, I thought, because I'm always trying to think, okay, astrologically, what's going on you know, before I even see the chart kind of thing. And before I had seen the chart, I thought, well, there's definitely something around dependence here. So I would be looking for 
8th house activity or Scorpio and I would be looking for 12th house activity or Pisces. I knew that there'll be something like that going on. So if we bring up her chart, I, I spotted that straight away. I'm like, ah, oh, look at that. The problem that we have happening here is this Parivartana exchange that is happening between the 12th house where she has Leo and there's Mars there and the third house where she has got Scorpio uh, and her son is there. And it's really interesting that the court has appointed her father, the son, you know, in astrology, the son, the father. So the son is, well, the father is in charge of um, this court order. And yeah, it, it has made her massively dependent. That was one of the things that I discovered. So when did this conservatorship begin? It began 13 years ago. So I clicked back through the um, transit wheel and I saw, aha, Saturn is transiting eighth from her moon and twelfth from her ascendant. So again, we've got this eighth from, twelfth from. Okay, so I, I definitely knew there has to be uh, some kind of yeah, I was looking for 8th house, 12th house, Scorpio, Pisces. These were the things I was looking for and I found it. And I think when Saturn was making that transit through uh, her 8th from the moon position, that was really the thing that, that materialized this, this court order to happen. It's really interesting when I work with one of you, when I work with my clients and I know that you're coming up to an 8th house transit, I will very often say, make sure you have some money saved because this is typically a time when people transition career uh, and you know a transition can be made and then you end up dependent on someone say for example um, you might be dependent on your spouse or your family or something like this and um, yeah it ended up that Britney Spears became I get I suppose a bit dependent on her family and maybe she was unwell for a time but the poor thing, she's been stuck in this legal arrangement. She's fine now. She, she doesn't need this legal arrangement on her and she's wanting to break free. So why is it that she's wanting to break free now? What's happening now that means she is able to speak up and she is able to potentially you know, break out of this legal arrangement? Well, she's breaking free now because Saturn is on her moon. So she is at the height of her Sadisati period. And this period, Sadisati, is when Saturn passes over the moon. Traditionally in India, people are always scared of Sadisati. They're, oh no, Sadisati is coming. Now, this can be an amazing time in a person's life. So please don't be scared. Please don't be frightened of this time. This is a time where I have seen people, I've seen, there's this one case I know, this person I know who got married. Um, had a kid, moved country, bought a house and paid off the house all within Sadi Sati period. Okay, it can be amazing. It can be absolutely amazing. So please don't fear this time, uh, especially if you're on the spiritual pathway. It's, it, it's very likely going to be a good time. Okay, so if you're a spiritual person and, and you're, uh, you know, you're on that path and everybody here who's watching you'll be fine. Right? So I don't want anyone to fear Sadi Sadi period. But one of the things I will say about Sadi Sadi is that when Saturn is passing over your moon, it's an incredible time where he is kind of, he's either pressing on the weak links of your mind or he's weeding, he's ripping out you know, what you don't need from your mind. It can be a painful time, it can be a challenging time. And one of the things I, I personally experienced this in my Sadi Sadi, and this was long before I got into astrology or, you know, um, knew about any of this stuff but I remember having this moment and this time where I discovered if I don't speak up and if I don't fight for what I want then there is no me that is what I discovered at the height of my Sadi Sati and that is exactly where Britney Spears is now she's at this point in her life where she's like if I don't say something if I don't act if I don't do something there is, n there is no me. There's not going to be any me. And on this channel before, I've given examples of other famous people <clears throat> who've gone through this. 
And the two that I've given in the past is Princess Diana. She did her panorama interview at the height of her Sarisati period. It was like she had to speak. She had to say something. She had to say, look, this has been awful, you know, and I have to say something. It can't go on like this. So she spoke. And Ellen DeGeneres is another um, famous example of a person who at the height of her Sarisati, that is actually when she came out on the Oprah show. She came out and she, she was like, it's a, it's a real time. Saturn moon is a real time of honesty. You have to be honest. And it is a time of self, of and preserving the self, self-love. There's a lot within Sarisati period. So that is the reason that she is breaking free now. It's quite incredible. Uh, all of this activity, you know, has been uh, supported by a grassroots public movement. So this hashtag Free Britney has come because I guess her fans, the people who believe in her, the people who love her, uh, you know, they have noticed that she has changed, that she hasn't been the same person. And yeah, they know that there's something not right. And, and I think the fans were doing things like in your next film clip, you know, if um, if you want to give us a sign, like put put a put an apple in your next film clip or something like that. Like the the fans were trying to communicate her with her, and apparently she was responding. So you know, um, it, it's been pretty incredible. But the reason I wanted to bring up this grassroots public movement is because Saturn is in yes, he's in Capricorn, but he's just about to go into Aquarius. He's kind of right now in his, his two houses in a way. And there are lots of grassroots movements that are starting up right now. They're happening now. People are protesting, people are fighting. And one of the reasons I wanted to cover this Free Britney story is because I think she's being incredibly brave and incredibly inspirational at a time where all of us are considering the legal things or lack of legal protection. I mean, gosh, is it, is it, yeah, the, 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 the legalities around us, you know, I'm just going to check on the time. We're okay. Um, the legalities around us. So, you know, a lot of us are a little bit concerned about the fact that it could be mandated that we have to take an experimental drug in our bodies even though we might not be sick and we might not want it, you know, but it's people are talking about the fact that, well, this could be mandated, you know, and just like Britney Spears is rising up and she's saying, no, you know, I don't want this conservatorship on me, you know, and, and what if the thing is, she's looking at like, um, and I looked at this because we've got Venus moon in her fifth house there. This is, you know, this, this is definitely the chart of um, someone who, I think she's got children already, but what if she wanted more children? You know, and it's a beautiful chart for having children. Um, but as we can see, it's the fifth house there is lauded by uh, Saturn. So there's delays and blockages to having children. And I do believe that one of the things in the court order is that she has to have permanent contraception so that she doesn't give birth. This is horrible. And she's just like, no, I don't want this. What if I wanted to have another kid? Absolutely. She should be able to do that. So yeah, I just, it's incredible that all this is going on right now. The other thing is that the legal system is quite weak. And that's why I was saying that, you know, some of us are thinking we might have to protest uh, against laws that might come up in the coming months, year or two, because really that, that is the time window that they've got. They've got, I believe, until I think that, I mean, it's been crazy, right? And I think the crazy is going to keep going until sort of Jan, Feb 2023. Saturn is still in Capricorn. This is not a good time. And Jupiter has been debilitated. So this is why I say that, you know, there's a lack of legal protection for us people. Uh, you know, the, the, the legal system is extremely weak because Jupiter is where Jupiter is. So this, this has been such a tough time. And there's, there's such resonance with this case, with the Free Britney case for each one of us you know, um, with, with experimental drugs possibly being mandated. 
Um, let's have a look at this. So when might she be free of this awful court order? Well, I mean, there are different dates that are coming up and I'm going to say as soon as November 2021 onwards, Jupiter moves into Aquarius. So this is good. And this is a time where I think that the justice system should start to come back online again, because when Jupiter has been in Capricorn, we can see that, yeah, it's like the legal system has been offline. It hasn't been operational. It's not working. Uh, and this is why certain large powers have been able to get away with quite a lot of things in recent times. But I do feel that the justice system is going to start coming online again, November 2021 onwards. April to June, Saturn is in Aquarius. Okay, so that could be a time. So there, there are different times where we could see her being totally free of this order. You know, as soon as November 2021 onwards, because of Jupiter moving into Aquarius, then we've got April to June 2022, Saturn is moving into Aquarius. This could be good for her. Uh, January 2023 onwards, I've got the note she should be becoming a lot freer, if not free. Uh, her big rewards for this time will come. Okay, so she'll be in her last phase of Sadi Sati, Jan 2023 onwards. She'll still have 2.5 years within Sadi Sati, period. Uh, I've got the note here, her big rewards for all that she's been through. She's been through a lot and it hasn't been easy. Her big rewards for this time will come April 2025 onwards for 2.5 years. That is the time she should definitely be a free woman. Okay, um, so and not only that, I think she should be rewarded and, um, you know, yeah, it's what a case. huh? I've got the notes here. Um, what about our freedom? And, and I kind of dipped into that earlier where I was saying that a lot of us are looking at the legalities around us or the lack of legal protection, however you want to see that. But a lot of us are looking at this thing of what if they mandate you know, experimental drugs to go into our body, we must say no. We just have to say no. That's what we have to do. We have to not allow it with our words, with our actions, uh, with every fiber of our being. Caroline Mace talks about this. She talks about, um, you know, and it's, it's almost like she was describing the height of Sadi Sati period, but she was talking about the chakra system and the evolution and maturation of the chakra system. She said that as you mature and as you grow, you will come to a place where you say I in a way that you've never said I before. And I do think humanity is evolving to that. Each one of us individually is evolving to that. We're looking at people like Britney Spears, who she's doing that right now. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, so in regards to our freedom, when are we going to be able to experience that? Or is there going to be a test? Or I, I do think so. I think January 2023 onwards for 2.5 years, when Saturn moves into Aquarius, that's going to be humanity's test to stand up and, you know, say no and and create what it is that we want. The spotlight is going to go off leadership. The spotlight is on leadership now. The spotlight will go off leadership and it will come onto the people. And I do think that that's kind of why the elite people or the people in charge, they're trying to get away with what they can. I think maybe even they sense that their window is beginning to close. So they do, it, it does feel like they're acting in a desperate way. Uh, at the moment and when the spotlight goes onto humanity I really do think I think there's I think we've got the numbers to win I know people have written that in the comments on these videos before when I've talked about these kind of subjects somebody wrote one time do we have the numbers do you know I think we do I think 2023 onwards for 2.5 years it's going to be amazing and I think humanity is going to make progress um, I've got the note here, I'll put pictures up on the screen of recent protests in Europe. So we, we do have people protesting, you know, all around the world. Uh, I'm pretty sure at France, they had some really big protests, Greece as well. I'll put up whatever pictures I can find and you'll be able to see that there are people coming out. Now you won't see any of these images on mainstream media. I wonder why. They might be in cahoots with uh, 
certain powers that be. Let's take a look here. So I've got the note here, we will have to take back what has been lost throughout Saturn in Capricorn. Yes, the people, the people need to, need to fight back. We need to say no and we need to create what it is that we want. I've got the note here, it's a heck of a lot of work ahead of us, but the energy should be there. The legal system should start to be coming back online. Yes. Now this leads into a little bit of chat on the United States chart. I'm just going to touch on this briefly. I've talked about this before. I might do a breakout video just about this uh, one of these days, but the United States is going to have massive tests 2024, Pluto natal return, and America is in the height of its Sade Sati period. So look at that. We've just seen what Britney Spears has been going through that she has had to speak up and fight for herself, fight for her being a self, fight for her rights. America's going to have to fight for itself, for, for being a self, for being a country. It's going to be massive. Um, and I, of course, I, my prayers and, you know, I, I wish America flourishes after this time, but I think it feels like there's, there's going to be a battle uh, of some kind battle for the soul of America, you know, um, that and if America doesn't stand up and fight for itself, you know, it's, it's not going to be a good thing. But I, I feel like, I, again, I feel very positive there too. I feel, I feel like humanity is going to, um, to come through this time well, and I think America will too. But there are certain forces that they're desperate. They, they're going to try whatever they can. So let's see. Now, I think that is the news for, okay, we're at the 22 minute mark. I'm probably going to have to change the memory card, but um, yeah, that, that's really all I wanted to cover this month in terms of new ma news matchup. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through the little mini reports. And this time I'm going to cover the fast moving inner planets because that's a little bit of variety. Last time I think we covered Jupiter in quite some depth. I think I covered Saturn. I feel like I've, I think I've done a lot of Saturn. So we are going to cover Mars, Venus, Sun and Mercury. Okay, so that, there's some new news there. And we're also going to have a look at the new moon and the full moon for each sign. Welcome Aries. Thank you so much for joining. So in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus together in your fifth house. So this is good energy for creativity. It's good energy for spending time with your children. Uh, you know, if, if you feel like the house is getting a bit too full and a bit crazy, um, just go easy on the kids. All right. But like, you know, and it, Get, get a bit of time out if you need to. Mars, you know, in the fifth house might feel a little bit claustrophobic at times, but um, it's great energy for Venus. And, you know, there should be some energy to be creative, to get a lot done. It's a beautiful energy for single people. So if you're hoping to meet someone, you never know, this could be uh, a good, you know, that good first half of the month could be amazing for that. So the second half of the month, we're then going to have Sun and Mercury joining Mars in that fifth house. So be careful with your health. You might feel a bit run down. Take it easy if you're feeling tired. You might experience um, issues around stomach, heart troubles, that kind of area, just sort of the central part of the body. Just, you know, um, take it easy if you need to. And the other note I've got for the second half of the month is just be careful of any arguments with your romantic partner or your boss at work. So there's a new moon on the 8th of August that's happening in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. That could be a good time to do some clutter clearing because that's happening in your fourth house. So yeah, it could be a good time to just get rid of old stuff. Do a bit of spring cleaning. Doesn't matter. You don't need spring to be on. Just do the cleaning. <laughs> um, full moon. Let's have a look here. Sometimes when it comes to cleaning, I just become like, it could be midnight. And it's like, if, I, if I'm in a cleaning funk, it's like, that's it. 
I have to chuck stuff out. It just randomly happens. Okay, now there's a full moon happening 22nd August in Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra. So for you, that's happening in your 11th house. This is a beautiful full moon for you guys. And this could be a nice time to just reflect on your friends and the good times that you've had together. This could be um, just, a, it could be a really nice time actually to get in touch with, with people that you miss and that you haven't spoken to for a while. So Aries, it's looking like a pretty good month for you. And we are now gonna welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your fourth house. Okay, this is interesting. This is great for Venus. Uh, Mars might be getting a bit of cabin fever there, but um, it's great for Venus. Good time to redecorate your place. If there's something you want to do, if you're feeling creative or inspired to um, redecorate, this could be a good time for that. Mars will give you energy. If there are certain house projects you need to do, this could be a good way to channel your Mars energy. It could be a good time to, um, you know, those things that we neglect, like maybe there's, I don't know, a bit of mold on the ceiling or that thing that you want to sort out that you just don't have time for. This is a good time, but the housey stuff. Um, but there's a frustration with Mars. So if you are feeling cabin fever, if you are feeling a bit claustrophobic or something, take a walk go outside, get some fresh air, and definitely be careful how you speak to family. Okay, that's gonna be important. Now, the second half of the month, you're gonna have Sun and Mercury joining Mars in that fourth house. So definitely be careful with property matters. It's not a great time to move or you know, to be dealing with contracts or anything like that that are to do with the home. Uh, however, well, Mercury is well-placed in the fourth. But I'm not seeing, it, it's not great for property, this Mercury. This is a good Mercury for ideas to earn more money. Uh, and you can definitely, I think, prosper in your workplace as well uh, over this month when Mercury goes into that fourth house. So yeah, it, this could be a good time to act on any ideas that you have for bringing in more income, that kind of thing. There's a new moon. 8th August and that's happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. Now for you this is happening in your third house so this could be a really good time to redo your LinkedIn profile if you haven't done that for a while or um, brush up your social media perhaps this could be a good time maybe a new photo on your profile pictures or something like that. Uh, now there's a full moon on the 22nd of August and that's happening in Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra that's going to be in your 10th house. So there could be some kind of really massive culmination uh, of something at your workplace. Maybe a project is going to complete or maybe a cycle is going to come to an end. And that's really good because, you know, that that is indicating once once that is completed, something new is definitely going to come into your workplace. So that's pretty exciting, Taurus. Overall, I'm seeing that this should be a pretty good month for you. Uh, it is a kind of homebound, housebound type of month, but you know, that's not too bad, especially if you're in a part of the world that's in lockdown. It's kind of, every sign is a bit like that, but for you, it is particularly like that. But it's looking pretty good, Taurus. So I'm wishing you well for this month. And we are now gonna welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. In the first half of this month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your third house. So this is great. This is great for both Venus and Mars. This is, in fact, I'm just kind of scanning your chart and your whole month. This is a fantastic month for you, like really great month. So make the most of this month, Gemini. You've got Mars and Venus in the third. So Venus is going to help you feel social. If you haven't been socializing, if you haven't been getting out much or, or doing things. This is a really good month to see if you can make that happen. You're gonna have the energy as well. You're gonna have the physical energy. 
to go out and enjoy yourself. So do see if you can do that. Uh, and, but this is just great for work because Mars in that third house is a real power position here. So definitely try to be seen with your work, try for promotions, try to take that next level up, really go for it if you can this month. Now in the second half of the month, we have Sun, Mercury and Mars in your third house. So Sun and Mars, this is just beautiful energy for your physical health. You should be feeling great, feeling courageous, feeling able to do things, feeling able to build, you know, make the new things happen. You can get a lot done this month. It's an excellent time for promotions, excellent time to earn more, to achieve more. It's great. Now Mercury, the only note I have here with Mercury is just be careful with seniors at work. So don't go overboard with this energy uh, and just take care with how you speak to your seniors. But if you can really make the most of this, that would be great. There's a new moon happening 8th of August that's in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. And for you, that's going to happen in your second house. So this is a really good time to it's a good time to plant seeds in regards to long-term wealth. And it's a good time to kind of check in with, you know, savings accounts that you have, or if you've got a, I don't know, it's like a retirement fund that you have to deal with, or, you know, those things that you put on the back burner that you don't really deal with, but you, that you should be dealing with. This is a good time to spend some time, maybe just some admin around your finances, something like that. Uh, full moon is happening on the 22nd of August, Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra. That's happening in the ninth house for you. So you might come to some new understandings, even awakenings in terms of your beliefs. You know, you might be able to look back and see that, wow, several years ago, I did not believe what I believe today. And that's a good thing to reflect on in this full moon. And I did a little bit of this the other day when I, I realized that, you know, yeah, like how asleep I was like many years ago in comparison to now, like the things that I've learned now. And it's just like, whoa, like, you know, it wasn't just me that was so asleep, you know, in the 90s or, or the 80s or whatever it was. It was like it was a lot of people. We were all asleep, weren't we, about many things. So this could be a good time for reflection on your beliefs beliefs what you believe now so gemini thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so in the first half of the month you have mars and venus in your second house so the focus really is going to be in your home and it, it could be focus on your savings and wealth. And what I would say is that maybe use the Venus energy to uh, enjoy time with your family or enjoy time being at the family home, but use that Mars energy to perhaps get on top of your finances. Maybe there's some admin to do around finances or something. If you can make that Mars energy, that doing energy of yours quite focused on managing your money better, your wealth, maybe you want to switch it product or something because there's a better rate somewhere else or something like that this could be a good month to do that uh, yeah I've got the note here Mars energy this month is best used to get on top of admin or get on top of your finances yeah now in the second half of the month you're going to have Sun Mercury and Mars together in that second house so Sun in the second house might increase your expenditure so just be careful of that um, Mars isn't particularly feeling social. So in the second half of the month, if you don't feel like being too social, that's a good thing, okay? But like, yeah, if you are around people, you know, um, just be careful how you speak to them. Mars in the second house, it's classic. I've had sometimes people write to me below afterwards. I say, gosh, if only I listened to that. I've had that with this Mars in the second house, so funny. Mercury is great in the second house. So that's good. I've got the note here. You can use this energy to excel at work. So that's second half of the month. You can definitely uh, excel at work. You might be recognized by peers or co-workers. Wouldn't that be nice? So I'm wishing that for you, Cancer. So there's a new moon happening on the 8th of August. That's in Cancer, Ashlesha, Nakshatra. That's the first house. This is your new moon. So 
Wish big, plant seeds for a renewal of yourself, for a renewal of your entire being. And you can plant the seeds, you can, when there's that new moon, you can write down what it is that you wish for and you can tear it up, recycle it, burn it, however you want to do that. But um, this is a big new moon for you. So if you want to set some big cycles into motion about things that you would love to materialize in the years ahead, this is a really good time for you to do that. And we've got the full moon, 22nd August, Aquarius Danisha Nakshatra, and that's happening in your eighth house. So there could be some culmination of a family matter, something to do with shared finances, something to do with in-laws, some culmination around that area of your life. So Cancer, it's looking like a pretty good month for you. Uh, yeah, I'm liking this month. Just be careful how you speak to family. I think that's my only tip there. All right, we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. I'm just checking the time. Good, we're good for time. That's excellent. So in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your first house. So Venus is feeling quite social here. This is great. Being with people is going to be really nice. It's going to be a nice time to meet someone new as well. But Mars energy isn't the best here. So it's not a great time to start your own business, for one. Your health, you might be a bit run down because this is the first house is the area of your physical body. Um, also, there's that not a good time to start your own business. That's Mars opposite the seventh house there. So um, definitely. And also there's a fourth aspect on the fourth house, which is your mother. So be careful in your relationship with your mother. Second half of the month, we're going to have Sun, Mercury and Mars in your first house. Now, this is going to be quite draining on your physical body, possibly. Um, the sun may drain your physical energy as well. So be extra careful with your health, uh, especially headaches, eyes, things like that. Be careful with that. Um, Mars can tire you out here. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a low energy month for you, Leo. Uh, Mercury, be careful with expenses. Your expenses might rise. And definitely hold off on travel plans. So there is a new moon happening 8th August, Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. That's happening in your 12th house. This is a beautiful time for you to dream big. Dream for what you want. Dream. It's a great, dreamy, lovely, beautiful new moon. So if you want to plant some seeds as to what it is that you want to wish for, it's always good to write those down. You can tear it up. Uh, recycle it, burn it. The other thing I forget to mention this is that when you do that, it's like a little ceremony, celebrate after, celebrate like it as if it's happened. Have the feeling that what you wish for is happening. That feeling is going to count because that is the, the, the law of attraction thing. You, you want that feeling to be repeated, right? With the stuff, ideally. So that's how you do it. So that's going to be new moon, 8th August, Cancer, Ashlesha, Nakshatra. Now, there's a full moon, 22nd August, Aquarius, Danishta Nakshatra. That is happening in your seventh house. So there could be a culmination, uh, something coming to fruition around, it could be your business, it could be your partnership, your marriage as well. So there's something going to come full circle or something is going to make sense or you're going to get a realization or you get an aha moment but something is going to complete and there will be some new beginning uh, that will come in that area of your life so leo thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome virgo virgo thank you so much for joining now in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your 12th house. Venus loves being here. I've spoken about this. I've spoken about this. I'll put the link above. Um, yes, I'm just going to make a note as well that Virgo, I've got a card. You know those card things and the information button and it smiles. Anyway, so Venus loves being in this place and there's a video all about that and so luxuriate in your beautiful feminine energy. This is fantastic. Now Mars on the other hand is restless here. 
This could be a good time to channel Mars energy into your creativity. Okay, so if you're feeling restless, get creative, right? It's a beautiful part of the zodiac, 12th house, very creative. So uh, you can definitely be creative there. You could also channel this energy into a new fitness routine. Sometimes people do get aches in their body and things like that. Mars in the 12th house, sometimes it can manifest in that way. So you might want to channel that energy into a new fitness routine. And I've got the note here, do less or do yoga. So this is not a, a time to, because Mars in the 12th is not great, but like mm, it's good for things like toning up and working slowly with your muscles and yoga and you know sort of beautiful tai chi and all those kind of wonderful things so um, you can definitely enjoy stuff like that in this month now the second half of the month you're going to have the sun and mercury join mars in that 12th house so the sun being there it might mean that you get less sleep uh, and if that's the case don't worry about that we go through cycles with our sleep and it's not, I know that they say that you should really get at least eight hours a day. It's very true. But there will be some times, for example, in the year where, you know, a month in the year, you've got sun going through that 12th house of yours. So, um, you know, this could be a time to have some nice books by bedside. Uh, books are always good. You don't want the blue light of your laptop. What you want are good books and good, healing, restful, nice books like Letting Go, David Hawkins, Power of Now, I Cut Tolly, all those good things. Uh, so definitely have those by your bedside if you're feeling you can't sleep, but that time will pass, so don't worry. Mercury, expenditure might go up, and it's just important to be cool and calm in your relationships, especially your relationship with your spouse. Okay, uh, there's a new moon happening 8th August, Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra, and that is happening in your 11th house. So this is the house of hopes, dreams, and wishes. You can wish big, wish for what you want. You know, what do you really want to manifest in life? And wish for, for what it is you want. So at that new moon time, do write down the things that you would like to materialize. And as I've been saying to the other signs, rip it up, burn it, and then, and then feel the feeling, celebrate, feel the feeling of having it. And you should magnetize what it is that you want to you. Now there's a full moon happening on the 22nd of August and that is Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra, sixth house for you. So there's going to be some kind of culmination at work or how you handle clients or how you serve. Maybe you're going to close a cycle and maybe you're going to start a brand new cycle of how you work with your clients. Maybe um, you'll have you'll have some kind of new way of, of, of taking in clients, of working with them, of seeing them off on their journey. You know, it, it could be an amazing time. That's 22nd August, that full moon there. So Virgo, it's looking like quite a good month for you. I'm liking the energy uh, in your month. I think it's going to be quite good. I'm wishing you well, wherever you are. And we are now going to welcome <clears throat> Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, in the first half of the month, you have Mars and Venus in your 11th house. Oh, this is great. This is good energy. Both of these guys love being in this place. So it's a great time to meet new people. Great time to be social. If you're single, you might meet someone new. Um, great time to go for promotions. Do more networking. Build your business. It's a great time to strike out and get new opportunities. Now in the second half of the month, we're going to have Sun and Mercury joining Mars in that 11th house. So again, this is all sensational, but the tone will change. It won't be as um, Venusian, <laughs> she's going to have left, she'll be in the 12th house. But you're going to have Sun and Mercury here and Mars. This is a powerhouse combination in that 11th house of yours. So second half of the month, you have got a magnificent opportunity to enhance your reputation at work, be seen, be appreciated, um, have more people follow you on social media, something like that. Uh, you know, Mercury, unexpected gains, promotions, great time to communicate and a great time for all of your relationships. So fantastic Libra, you've got a great month ahead of you. Now there's a new moon happening 8th August, Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra, 
and that is in the 10th house for you. So it's a good time to plant seeds for career growth. Really good time to come up with ideas for your career, how you can restructure things, how you can welcome new opportunities. You know, um, and I've got this phrase in my mind that's just popped in, like being the rainmaker. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe you've got some rainmaker ideas or something in as you're in that 10th house, that new moon. You want to bring in all these new opportunities. Maybe you're helping your clients do that. Uh, there's a full moon happening on the 22nd of August in Aquarius Dhanisha Nakshatra. Now that's happening for you in your fifth house. So there's going to be some culmination happening around your creativity. Could be to do with your children. Maybe your children are going to complete something. Uh, but overall, Libra, I'm seeing that this is a beautiful month for you ahead. I'm so excited for your month. I wish I had some more Libra going on in my chart. This is a great um, month that you've got. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your 10th house. Okay, so Mars does well here. Contrary to some of the things that I've read, in the research as I've looked at various texts on uh, these transits and who does well where. Some say that Mars doesn't do so well here. I do believe he does do well here through transit. I've experienced that myself um, and I've seen that in the lives of others so I, I, it does well here. The, the only thing is that you want to be careful at how you deal with your seniors at work. Just be careful with that. Venus is not too happy here. Okay, those of you who've been following my little Venus series lately, you know that Venus isn't thrilled to be here. But she's soon going to be in the 11th house. So in the last half of the month, she's going to be in a beautiful place. So in the last half of the month, you know, if you're feeling social, if you want to meet someone new, that's that's looking quite good there. The second half of the month, though, still focused on that 10th house, you're going to have Sun and Mercury joining Mars in that 10th house. Now the Sun does beautifully here. Okay, so this is great for work. Oh yeah, Mercury does too. Scorpio, this is fantastic for work. Okay, second half of the month, this is really the time to excel at work, to go for promotions, to you know be seen, to be recognized. The other thing is Mercury performs so beautifully here. I've got the note here, you'll speak brilliantly. You're going to have great ideas. You know, you can power ahead at work this month. So this is a really great month for you, Scorpio. I'm very excited. There's a new moon happening on the 8th of August. That's Cancer Ashleisha Nakshatra. That's the ninth house for you. So you're going to be able to plant new seeds. You might be able to manifest some new teachers, some new teachings, uh, new gurus. You know, this is a great time for you to contemplate and think about what is it that you want to learn going forward? What is it that you could do with learning that's really going to support your career and that's really going to help you get ahead? I've got so many things, uh, I've got so many astrology books that I need to learn. You know, I've always got things that uh, wishes for what it is that I want to learn. So that's something you can be contemplating on the 8th of August. Now there's a full moon happening on the 22nd of August. That's Aquarius Dhanisha Nakshatra. It's happening for you in your fourth house. So there's going to be some culmination of something at home. Maybe there's a project that's been outstanding at home. Maybe, maybe you need to get the stairs done. You know, maybe maybe there are two or three wooden slabs, uh, you know, at the back of your house that could do with just being tapped in. I might be talking about somewhere I know very well, but anyway, maybe that's going to be done <laughs> this month. Um, yeah, some kind of culmination at home. Maybe something will complete at your home. Something will finish. Maybe something that's been outstanding for a while. Maybe there's some renovation project or something like that. Hopefully, you've got the time and the energy to um, get that done once and for all. Scorpio, it's looking like a really good month for you, especially when it comes to work. So I'm wishing you well for your month ahead. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now in the first half of the month, you're going to have Mars and Venus in your ninth house. I'm just going to check the time. We're fine. Good. Now, who's happy here in the ninth? Mars. Mars is not thrilled to be here. Uh, Mars finds it hard to, to be in the ninth house. 
you might find that your energy is on the lower side you might get a bit tired a bit run down easily so take care of your health really really important um, this can be a time where mars finds it has to work twice as hard to to achieve success so that's just something to bear in mind there venus does beautifully here this is great for your relationship uh, and great for learning, finding new gurus, great for expanding intellectually. And this is stuff that you love to learn. This is, I'm just thinking of a Richard Feynman quote where he says, study hard what interests you most in the most irreverent, undisciplined, and something else, something, something, let me find it. I've got it right here. <laughs> Is I put this at the start of my notebooks and he says, I'm determined to find it. Study hard what interests you most in the most undisciplined, irreverent and original manner possible. Do that. that. This is the month for that. Venus loves that. She doesn't want to be disciplined. She wants to enjoy. So enjoy your intellect. Enjoy learning. Enjoy expanding uh, your mind and, and learning from new people. Now in the second half of the month, we have the sun mercury joining mars in that ninth house so the sun might drain your energy here wow yeah you've got sort of the masculine energies for you are going to be a little bit draining this month they're not the best um i've got the note here watch out for your spine hips thighs knees because of that sagittarius area and yeah that's just you know don't don't overwork those areas at the gym kind of thing um Assuming you go to a gym, I don't. I do my exercise at home. Anyway, Mercury. Mercury doesn't do so well here. Okay, I've got the note here. Be careful in relationship with dad or bosses. Expenses could shoot up at this time as well. So really, I mean, Venus is, is doing well here. You've got some nice Venus energy at the start of the month, and that's fantastic. There's a new moon happening, 8th August, Cancer, Ashlesha, Nakshatra. That's happening in your eighth house. So it's a great time to plant new seeds around your family or around your wealth, um, around shared wealth, around in-laws, shared resources, but definitely for family. You know, if you've got some wishes for you and your family, it's the time to, to dream big for you and your people. Uh, full moon is happening on the 22nd of August, Aquarius, Danishta, Nakshatra. It's happening in the third house. So there's gonna be some culmination around your sense of courage. And this is a really great thing to reflect on on the 22nd of August, this full moon. Reflect on how courageous you are now in comparison to what you were like five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Go back, have a look at your courage and just see, you know, that you would have come some way in, in many regards. I've got a really simple example of that. I've just got one popping into my mind now. I used to be really scared when I was very small <laughs> to, um, to light a match. Just doing that, we had to do that at school. We had to, each one of us go around and I don't know, you had to read a story and you had to light the candle. And when it came time to lighting the match, I was like trembling, I couldn't do it. Um, and now I have no problem with that. So it's, it's fascinating to observe these things, our, our, our courage, because like, you know, it's a good exercise to do. You can see that you've come some way and that can be very motivating for you to, to keep going forward in your journey. So Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. In the first half of the month that you're going to have Mars and Venus in your eighth house. Now, really, I am looking at uh, the fast moving planets this time. I'm not touching the big outer ones. So this is the new news that's happening. And you're gonna have Mars and Venus in your eighth house. So Venus enjoys being here. She loves being here. There's money here, you know, there's partners here. This is all great for Venus. So uh, Venus is very happy. She's gonna be very happy first half of the month. Mars, on the other hand, is not so great here. Mars can really have health challenges. Um, you know, there can be a drain on the health here for Mars. So where this is good for Mars, though, is 
It could be a really nice time for a small trip, a small little getaway with you and your family or friends. If you're able to have some kind of small little getaway, you know, jump in a car, go a little distance. A lot of people are doing these things called staycations where they're staying in their town, but they are um, you know, just, just having a holiday in, in their town, booking a hotel, doing something different, just to get out. If you're feeling a bit of cabin fever, if you need to do that, you can. Be careful if you're driving or traveling though. I do have that note here. Second half of the month, we have Sun and Mercury joining Mars in that eighth house. So the Sun might drain your energy here. Yeah, far out. You guys have got some, be careful with your health. Take it easy. Rest if you have to. Don't overdo it. All that kind of thing. Uh, the Sun could drain your energy here. There could be legal issues that you might have to deal with. It's not a great time to take out a loan. If anyone's considering that, but don't worry. These are fast moving planets. These transits end quickly. So you will be able to do that. Possibly, I mean, the sun will move. Maybe September might be a better time if you need it alone. Uh, Mercury does beautifully here. So <clears throat> this is great. You've got a lovely transit of Mercury being here in the eighth house. The second half of the month, you're gonna have Mercury uh, doing really well. And Mercury does great here. There can be a real deepening of intellect and wisdom. This is a time where you could get to the bottom of something. And I do believe that you could really get to the bottom of something to do with your own healing or any of your own challenges or any, if you've experienced trauma or difficulties or challenges, any of that, this could be a time where you could powerfully use this mercury to get to the bottom of it, to figure out what was that? Why did I have to go through that? This second half of the month could be a really good time uh, to figure out some big things. So, there's a new moon happening for you on the 8th of August. This is happening in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra, seventh house. So if you are single, this could be a time where you wish to meet that dream partner of yours, that special someone that you really wanna be with. If you're in a partnership, this could be a really good time to wish for higher octaves of love. You know, you should wanna experience better times with your partner um, or improvements to certain dynamics. Maybe you wanna wish for healing between you and your partner. New moon, 8th August could be a good time to do that. And there's a full moon happening on the 22nd of August. That's in Aquarius, Danisha Nakshatra. That's happening for you in your second house. So there's gonna be some culmination, uh, something to do with money, savings, your big savings, or something to do with your family. You might discover that some cycle will come to a close, something will come to full circle, something will be understood. It, it could be a really, a really good time. I'm loving the new moon and full moon for you this time, Capricorn. It could be very illuminating. So I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Aquarius. All right, so Aquarius, just check the time. We're good, that's gone. There we go. Um, Aquarius, I've got the note here. This is a month to work. Jupiter is your friend this month. Yeah, Jupiter is your friend. I was trying to find which of these energies is uh, going good for you, but it, it seems like they're all having an interesting time. Let's take a look. So in the first half of this month, you have got Mars and Venus in your seventh house. So neither are overly happy to be here. Yeah, I remember you, Aquarius, because Sun and Mercury aren't too happy here either. That's why I was saying Jupiter is your friend. You've got a friend in the sky. You don't have to worry. Um, let's get back to this seventh house of yours. So Mars and Venus are gonna be there. Yeah, neither are overly happy to be here. I've got the note here, give yourself some space with your partner or your business partner. Um, channel the energy of this Venus and Mars into your creativity, okay? All is not lost. Anytime we've got a transit, it's like, okay, Mars and Venus are transiting through the seventh house. They're not so thrilled to be there, but they've still got energy and you can channel that energy creatively. You can do something with that energy. So take the foot off the accelerator of your love life. You know, um, don't be expecting too much from your partner. If you're single and you're actively dating, this may not be the greatest month to be online dating. I have a friend who's doing that and yeah, every now and then, I don't know her uh, signs, so I don't know you know, how she's 
doing with all that but I know every now and then she will just be like I'm just I'm not doing the dating thing this month she's like I'm just not doing it so this is that kind of month there's that kind of month where you know give space between you and your partner or um, if you're actively dating yeah don't take your foot off the accelerator it's a short transit it's gonna pass soon anyway um, not the best month for that kind of thing but these planets are there and they do have energy and you can use this creatively you can use this for your creativity. This could be used for social media. Uh, you know, you, you can use this energy really well. Venus is going to do better in the second half of the month for you. Okay, so it's just the first couple of weeks, right? Second half of the month, you are going to have in that seventh house, which I'm concentrated on this time, you're going to have Sun and Mercury and Mars together in that seventh house. So the Sun might bring opposition your way. It's not a great transit for the sun. Uh, it's not a great transit for Mercury either. So yeah, it's kind of, um, I don't have the best news here for you. Uh, you might feel like people are against you and it's hard to win. I've got the note here, keep vertical energy. Okay, so when times are like this, you can always have an amazing relationship with God. Okay, that relationship is always amazing. So stay there. And, then, and work with yourself and work with bringing that energy down. How can I um, create? How can I be creative? How can I do my thing? How can I, this is a good time for you to, yeah, I've got the note here, month to work. This is a month for you to work without expecting anything from the outside world. You will see that the work that you do will pay off. It will definitely pay off, okay? It's gonna pay off. So do your work this month, definitely. And Jupiter is your friend, all right? So Jupiter and God are your two friends this month. Um, I've got the note here, there's a new moon, August, 8th August, Cancer, Ashlesha, Nakshatra. This is happening for you in the sixth house. So you can wish big in terms of your career. You know, how would you like to serve the collective? Do you serve the collective? You know, you might be doing a job where you're like, do you know what, I'm, I'm doing a good job, but I know I can do more. You know, maybe you're a, a light worker, a healer, and you're currently in some corporate situation and you're wanting to be making moves towards healing the collective in a way that's more satisfying for you, you know, where you feel like you're really helping people. I know what this is like. I was very much in a corporate career where, you know, I get good feedback now and then, but the kind of feedback I get now from what I'm doing now Oh my gosh, it, there's no comparison, you know, I, I'm being fed from the feedback alone, right? It's like before I used to earn money, now I earn good feedback, you know, it's a different thing. But uh, I'm much happier doing what I do now. There's a full moon happening on the 22nd of August, Aquarius Danisha Nakshatra, that's happening for you in your first house. So there's a real culmination of your sense of self, this is huge. Aquarius. So you got a great big full moon in your own sign and this is a good time for you to reflect on who you are and who you've been, you know, and look at me, I was just doing it. I was like, oh, many years ago I was working in those jobs and I'm not that person anymore, you know. Every moment you're someone new and yeah, we forget that. That's, that's difficult to live like that. But at the full moon we can certainly reflect uh, on the past years and see who we were and see who we are now. That'd be a good activity for you, Aquarius. All right, well, we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, the memory card's about to stop. It's 24 minutes. I think I'm just going to actually stop the video and start fresh with you. Pisces, welcome back. I just paused it, I stopped it, and we've got a fresh memory card now. Okay, let's take a look at your stars. So in the first half of the month, you have Mars and Venus in your sixth house. Ah, this is very good. Not so great for Venus. Venus does not like being in this place, but Mars truly excels here. So it's a great month for you to work hard, for you to achieve, for you to serve, for you to win, right? This is really good. Mars is excellent in this position, yeah. So you can really make progress with work. Now put love on the back burner, okay? Venus. She's not happy here and I tell you something, she's going to move into the seventh house and for the second half of the month she's going to be in the seventh house, she's not going to be happy there either. So 
not much love happening for a little while. Don't worry, Venus is going to have good transits. So we're kind of looking, what, September, October, somewhere there. But um, for now, really, it's about work for you. So the second half of the month, I've got Sun, Mercury and Mars in your sixth house. This is sensational, okay? Sun is going to help you shine. Sun is going to help you win against opposition. Mercury is going to have you saying all the right things. You're just going to speak and it's going to be like some genius is talking. It's going to be amazing. So I've got the note here. This is a great month for winning, achieving, earning. I do have in brackets avoid superiors. Yes, that's a Mercury thing. You know, uh, just be careful with superiors maybe, but um, could also be a Sun and Mars thing as well because there can be a bit of... A bit of ego happening there, but that's all right. It's good, healthy ego too. It's great energy for you this month, Pisces, when it comes to your work. So I'm wishing you well with that. Now, as for new moon and full moon, we've got a new moon on the 8th of August. This is in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. It's happening in your fifth house. So you can wish for new things to do with your children, to do with creativity. Maybe there's some creative project that you really want to do, something where you want to express yourself, something that you've always wanted to do, you've always wanted to make, um, put your wishes, put your wishes on paper if you can. You know, I've been telling this for various signs, write down your wishes, then it's a little ceremonial thing, you know, you can tear it up, recycle it, you can burn it if you want to, and then celebrate, feel the feeling that you've achieved it, that you've done it because it's that feeling that's going to magnetize the stuff, okay? So on the full moon, you know, my camera battery is flashing. Oh no, I'm going to have to hurry. Full moon is happening 22nd of August. That's Aquarius, the Nisha Nakshatra. That's happening for you in your 12th house. So there's some kind of culmination with your spirituality. Maybe your spiritual bandwidth has increased. Maybe your ability to take spiritual energy has actually increased over the years. So that could be something to reflect on at the 22nd of August, really reflect on the fact that you have grown so much spiritually and that perhaps your ability to take more spiritual ideas, wisdom, enlightenment, that has grown enormously uh, over the years. And, you know, that's pretty easy to reflect on. If you look at yourself 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you will see that there's quite a difference because all of us as a collective We've all been uh, evolving and maturing and we're evolving very rapidly at the moment. So that's why there are all these kind of evil forces trying to keep us down. Okay, Pisces, thank you so much. Pisces, the camera just got cut. I think I was wrapping up with you anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And to any one of you who's watched the whole thing all the way through, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time.